Our next speaker. Thank you. I also do the recording. <laughs> um, so, uh, so our next speaker is Lada Peksova, and she will be talking about modular operats with connected sum and Berlin sundering for the algebras. Lada, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here and also for the conference, which actually reminds me the normal times before the pandemic because all of these get through meetings and everything. So thank you very much for this. And as Fritzo said, I will be talking about modular operates with some new structure we introduced, connected sum. And this talk is based on the joint work with Martin Dobek, Branislav Urcha, and Jan Pullman. And hopefully it will appear soon on archive. We are still finishing some details. So what is the plan? I will first talk about modular operates. And you already seen something uh, about modular operates yesterday in the talk of Lucas Miller. But because this talk uh, concerns modular operates in basically every aspect, then I think it's good to have them fresh in your memory. So I will recall some of their basic properties. Then I will say the motivation. This is maybe not the standard way to say the motivation after I, I, I start talking about something, but I think it's good to, to say the motivation once you will know the, the whole dictionary. So the motivation will make some sense what I'm saying. And then in the end of the talk, I will talk about a new additional structure we, int we introduced. We call it connected sum. And as you will see, it reminds the connected sum you may know from algebraic topology. And uh, this connected sum helped us to, to define the graded commutative product on, on the, the spaces. And if you don't understand what I'm now talking about, don't worry, I will say everything in the talk. So what are operates? And I will say here the brief Briefly, the, the basic idea, many of you probably already met the operats, but for those who didn't, to have the, some basic idea in your mind, you actually already know some operat. So imagine that you have a vector space and you have some function on this vector space, some f, and you can think about this, this function which goes from nth tensor power of some vector space, again to the vector space, in picture like this, like you have some oriented tree with some inputs and one output. And when you have two such functions, you know they can be composed. So you can choose some each slot of f and plug their g. And you will again get some function from the vector space, some tensor powers of the vector space to, to, to itself. And again, diagrammatically, you can see it like this, that you are plugging the, the function g into the f, and this together will be again some oriented tree with some inputs and one output. And you know that there is naturally some associativity of this composition. I wrote here one example of this, when you have three functions, f, g, and h, and plug them into each other like this, you can think about the, the in pictures, you can think about it in, in two ways, that you first compose G with F, collapse it to one tree, and then plug into the result the, the function H. Or differently, you can first compose G and H, and then plug this result into the F. And you know that these two things should be the same. Obviously, there are some other versions of how you can compose three functions, and you can easily figure it down, figure them out as, as some kind of exercise. And in our case, we will also consider that there is some permutation on the inputs, some right action of the permutation group on an element. So Sn is the, is the symbol for this permutation group. And it's a right action on these functions. So when I have some function f and g, I can like on both of them act by some permutations. And there's obviously some compatibility. I will not tell the axioms explicitly, but you can like kind of like figure out that probably it's possible to compose the f and g and then apply some permutation and it would be the same. So there, there should be equivalents, they are the same. So we have this kind of like structure and as you can see, there, there are some axioms and we are basically trying to, to, to make the abstraction of composable functions. 
In the whole talk, I will be talking about the algebraic operands, which means that there will be always some vector space and not the topological operands as very yesterday. And I will always talk about the symmetric operands in the sense that I have there this action of the permutation group. And now, what if you have some symmetric non-degenerate bilinear form on this vector space? Then you can use this pairing and, and take the output of your function f and connect it, it and turn it actually into the input. So you will now, with this b with the head, you will change your, your function f to the, to the function which goes from n plus 1 tensor power to, to your base field, which could be real numbers or complex numbers. And because you have non-degenerate pairing, you can use the, the inverse element s to take one of the inputs and turn it to the output. And this way, you basically completely delete any distinction between the, the inputs and outputs. Any output you can turn into the input, and you can choose one of the inputs and turn it to the output. So basically, you can forget about any orientation of this tree. And this version would be called cyclic operat. And we can use this, this inverse of the pairing, this S, also to, to connect two of the inputs together and, and create this kind of loops. And this version would be called modular operat. So basically, by choosing the, the underlying type of graph, we are choosing what kind of operands we are talking about. And in, in our case, we choose the graphs which basically don't have any orientation. We take that every end of some edge is the input. And we possibly can have some loops. Now, formally, so the modular operat P is some collection where we ha uh, have some vector spaces indexed by N and G. N stands for these inputs of, of, the, the, of each of these abstraction of composable functions. And G is the index we use for these loops. So we try to, to keep the information about how many loops we created in the, in the, in the process. And as I said, we have some right action of, of the permutation group on, on these inputs. So we have the right SN modules. And together with this collection, we have also some degree zero maps, differential graded zero maps. And as it is usual in operands, I will still use the notation of this circle with the indices. And as you have seen, now we have to specify which indices we are using. We cannot just say that we plug it into some root. So by E and J, I'm saying that I'm choosing the E input from the first component and J input of the second component. And I'm connecting them abstractly with some edge. On the level of graph, you can think about like taking these two graphs and connecting them by some edge. And I'm getting again some kind of kind of uh, graph, which is just connected graph. And similarly, I have here the, the second map, which has two indices. And I'm just making the loop. Basically, it's obvious from the picture. And these maps must satisfy some axioms of associativity and equivariance. The associativity could be visualized in these four pictures. And the equivariance is what you would expect. So this is the structure of modular opera. If you don't like this approach of, of maps on, on some components, you, you can check the article of Kessler and Capron up there also showing how to do this more categorical way as algebra over monad. This is, I think, the, 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 the version which is more suitable for humans. So now some examples. So uh, the first example and probably the most trivial is the quantum closed modular operat. And uh, the, 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 the components here indexed by N and G are just one dimensional. So this NG is a symbol I, 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 by, by which I label the generator of this space. And because all these spaces are just one dimensional, then obviously you don't have to care much about which indices you choose because you always get the, the obvious element of, of the, the component based just on the number of inputs and, and the, the index G. And if we could choose the index capital G as this combination where 
the small g is some non-negative integer, we can interpret these, these co collections as the homomorphism classes of some Riemann surfaces, where these inputs, this n, will be number of punctures on, on these surfaces. And the small g will be the geometrical genus of these surfaces. And the, the operations, the, the modular compositions, the, the modular operator composition will be just gluing these punctures. So you have, obviously, when you take two surfaces, you can glue punctures from, from each of them together and get one surface. Or by gluing two punctures on one surface, you raise the genus of the surface and again some, get some Riemann surface. And th this example may seem very trivial, but as you will see later, uh, is it kind of like a toy example we can use for something? And th the fact that it's called closed is not uh, an accident. It, it, it should remind you to closed strings. Similarly, we can introduce the, the quantum open modular operator. It will be this time a little bit more complicated definition where the, the components are basically given by cyclic words. So the all inputs n are given as the disjoint union of the, the elements from these cyclic words. We allow also the empty word. And we, we have here the label G to, to keep the information about the, the, the genus G or, or the, the indexing G. And we choose the the indexing G this way, uh, because we, if you want to interpret them as the Riemann surfaces, as before, we still have just one composition between two surfaces. But as you can notice, we have actually two different types of, of self-composition of these self of these loops with two indices. They should be both on the right side. And one of them is connecting two different boundaries and raise you the genus the geometrical genus of the surface. The other one is not raising the genus, but raise the number of boundaries. So that's why we have this strange combination to, to, for the index G to have it consistent with the, the definition of modular operator. And finally, you can combine these two examples into quantum open closed modular operator. It's actually not a modular operator in, in the sense of the definition I showed you, but it's actually the two colored modular operator. And the, the two colored stands for the fact that we have two different sets, one for the open inputs, the open punctures, and one for the closed punctures. And the, the because we choose these gradings G the way like we choose, we can now have one consistent grading. And when we restrict to the closed part, we will get this quantum closed modular operator. When we restrict to the open, we would get the open part. And we, you can again visualize them as some Riemann surface, homomorphism classes of Riemann surfaces with punctures on the boundaries for the open or on the interior. And obviously, the, you have actually two types of gluing. You either glue the closed punctures or the open punctures. And the last is the probably the essential example you always need when you talk about operats is the endomorphism operat. And you already seen it on the beginning in the interaction. Uh, you, you have some vector space V with some symmetric non-degenerate pairing. And the components are given just by the tensor product of the V dual. We can, we can use just the finite dimensional vector space or think about the V as degree wise finite and, and do the graded dual. And the operatic structure is given here just by contracting the indices. And whenever you want to then talk about algebra over some operat P, what you actually do is that you make a modular operat morphism from that operat P to this endomorphism operat. You basically evaluate your operat on some particular vector space. And it means that to every component of your operat, you, you assign this component from the endomorphism operat and they are compatible with the structure of the operat. So you know what will happen if you make the permutation in the operat P or if you do it later in the operat endomorphism V. And basically, this is the way how you from some operat get the usual algebras you are used to. This is just like the way how you represent the operat. 
And now you can rightfully ask why we introduce something so complicated to have so trivial examples. And uh, the question is good. So now let's turn to motivation. So the operas in general are, are very useful when, whenever you, you start talking about the transfer problems. Basically, the idea is that you have some chain complex with some algebraic structure, and you have some homotopy equivalent chain complex, and you ask if it's possible to transfer this algebraic structure to this, to this homotopy equivalent chain complex. And in general, the answer is no, but in some cases, it's possible to, to transfer at least something. These problems are usually known as homotopy transfer theorem. And basically, it says that you have two chain complexes in this deformation retract, and you have the algebraic structure given by the operat B, and you are able to transfer it to this H chain complex, not precisely the original one, but the homotopy version of this algebraic structure. So in operat setting, you would say that you have the P algebra and you transfer it to P infinity algebra. Obviously, if you start with P infinity algebra, you get again the P infinity algebra. But what is this P infinity? In operas, it's just that you take the cover complex of the, the P anti shriek, where P anti shriek stands for the Cauchy dual differential graded cooperat. I don't want to go much into the, the theory of operas, but basically, you have some special type of operas called Cauchy, and then you make, can make the Cauchy dual. And for them, you can make this construction and get the, the cofibrant replacement of the original operat. So in operats, basically what is happening is that you first reduce your, your cooperat in the con cover construction. And then you take the underlying vector space of this, of this operat shifted by one. So, so if you had some, some everything in a degree zero, now you will have everything in degree one, for example, and then make a quasi-free operat on this underlying vector space. The quasi-free means that if you ignore the differential, it will be the free operat. So you will generate all possible trees where the vertices are decorated by this shifted underlying vector space. And the differential for this quasi-free, the differential is here naively given by this, this shifted decompositions from the cooperat. And basically what it means is that you take this trees decorate with decorated vertices and you use the decomposition so you will get two vertices both of them are decorated by by this shifted vector space so you get the map of degree one and so it works really like a differential as you would like with the modular operats you would like to repeat this idea but there are some subtle problems which which show up during the process. So the reduction in this case would be actually, you can care about the reduction just by in introducing the stability condition. And basically you, uh, you get rid of the components where n is one, g is zero, when n is zero, g is one, n is two, g is zero. When you think about these components, they basically tell you that you get rid of the unit, of the component, which would make a problem when you have the trivalent vertex and uh, the element, which would be saying just that you have non-trivial g equal one, but no inputs. So that's kind of OK. But then there is a problem that you, if you use the decomposition, let's say the dual of the original composition, and take the the, the same idea as in operas to assign to every vertex some degree, then the, the dual of the composition will may give you two vertices, but they also can give you just one vertex because you have this loop of uh, loop composition. And the idea which saves you the day is to realize that you don't have to get two vertices, but you always get exactly one edge. So instead of assigning the degrees to vertices, you assign the degrees to edges. But this subtle difference will cause that the whole process will be completely different and it's kind of complicated. So I don't want to get into the details, 
But let's say that this is the reason why you don't call this construction the cover complex, but you call it the Feynman transform because there is this kind of like difference between the, how you assign the degrees. And uh, some of you may ask, why is it called Feynman? And uh, it's not an accident. It's because the, the construction really reminds you the way how you make the Feynman diagrams expansion. So it's very similar to this. And uh, one thing which has to be said is that if you take the modular operat, make the Feynman transform, you don't get the modular operat, but you get the twisted modular operat. And in for modular operat, you actually get one particular type of twisted modular operat called odd, called odd modular operat. And what are odd modular operats? It's again some collection of right SN modules, but this time the compositions are of degree one. And that's because you have this degree on the edges. And basically they again will satisfy some axioms of associativity or equivariance. They will look nearly the same way, but the signs will pop up everywhere. And uh, it's just that you have to now care about the signs, but otherwise the idea will be nearly the same. So one example of this is the odd endomorphism operat, and it will be nearly the same as before. You just change the way how you are do this pairing. So you will use the odd symplectic form omega. The, the collection of the spaces will look the same way, but the operatic structure is given by pairing with this, this symplectic form. So let's show it in this case. Uh, in this case, so you choose some homogeneous basis of this vector space. You use the, the omega to, to define the, the for every element of this basis, some like connected element such that together they have a degree one and they together in omega are paired this way. And then you can plug them into some function. So you are using something of degree one, lower the number of inputs of, of the function and you have to care about the sign, that the sign get here a bit tricked. And you, you get exactly this self-composition on, on the function f. And similarly, the composition between two functions, you, you just plug there these two, two elements. And algebra over odd modal operat is as before, you use the, the operat morphism from the odd modular operat P to this odd modular endomorphism operat. And these morphisms are of degree zero. And now the, the Baranyakov and others probably noticed the idea is similar like in, in operas, and I know this from Baranyakov's articles, is that when you have the algebra over the Feynman transform, the, in our case, it was this odd modular opera, you can actually think about the isomorphism, which will take the, this components of, of this morphism alpha, so this alpha and G, the N and G are like for, for labeling that you are going from the, the component N and G to the isomorphism to this set of invariants. So, so, this, so you take the tensor product of these two and the more, uh, of these modular operands. This one is the standard operat again, and this one would, would be this odd modular operat. And you take the set of invariants of this space. And when you do this, you can actually denote this collection of all these invariants this way. You can denote the, 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 the alpha and G, G elements as S, and you can denote the, the combinations of the differentials, this SD, the combination of the operatic composition on P, uh, self-composition on P and operatic self-composition on, on the endomorphism as some delta. It may remind you the baton Volkovsky delta, and it's not an accident. And similarly, you can combine the, the composition between two components on P, tensor two composite components on endomorphism, and you will get something like bracket. Notice that all of these are of degree one because you were using here the, the, the odd endomorphism opera. 
And then the theorem is that when you have the algebra over this Feynman transform of modular operat on some vector space V with this symplectic omega, then it's in one-to-one -one with the solutions S of the quantum mastery equation of this form. So basically, instead of talking about algebra over Feynman transform, you can be talking about one particular solution. And these three maps, moreover, satisfy some, some more properties, uh, namely that D is actually differential, delta will be delta square zero, and there is some compatibility between the D and delta, and you will see that the, the bracket is satisfy some greater Jacobi. And many of you may, may see in this that this is almost batalin Wilkowski algebra. Why almost? So we don't have a product for, for, to have the full batalin Wilkowski algebra. We should have here some product which would tell us that it's graded commutative product. We have some associativity and we have some compatibility with the bracket of the delta. And now many of you may ask, okay, we have something super complicated. We get something kind of nice, some almost but only local algebra. And uh, why we are doing all this when we are not getting the full but only local algebra. So um, the question is good. So uh, I will give some, another part of motivation and that's from, this comes from string field theory, but I think the same thing holds basically in many quantum field theories. And basically, the problem is that um, in perturbative string theory, whenever you want to compute some scattering amplitudes, you need to integrate over moduli space. I think the moduli space is actually the same as, as was in the talk of Elba Garcia Falde just a few minutes ago. And the problem with this moduli space is that it's kind of huge. It's hard to work with it directly. So usually you try to decompose this, this moduli space into some elementar, elementary vertices and some propagators. And what is helpful is that you have here the batanigal kowiski algebra. You have here the boundary operator and you have here the batten Wilkowski bracket and delta given from the self sewing of these surf surfaces. And I think it was Zwiebach in the beginning of 90s who noticed that inside this model space, you have some something called string vertices. And basically these string vertices are part, is a region of this space that cannot be obtained by sewing lower dimensional string vertices. So you kind of have some distinct way how to decompose the, the space some way. And when you collect all these string vertices together, you will find out that, or he find out that they satisfy some quantum master equation of this form. And so you have on this chain of, of moduli space, some botanical Kowiski algebra with some solution of the of some quantum mastery equation. And you have also the, the functions on Hilbert space. That's also botanical Kowiski algebra. The structure here is given from the symplectic form, similarly as we have seen before. And you have some botanical Kowiski morphism between these two structures, such that you take the solution of the quantum mastery equation and you map it to the action of string field theory. So that, did, and, and in, in this, it's still kind of complicated, but then uh, later Markle noticed that these string vertices and, and this chains on moduli space, that it's actually twisted modular operat. And this functions on a Hilbert space is also a twisted modular operat. And the thing which is between them is actually just an algebra on the twisted modular operator. So it's, you can look on the whole problem in the setting of modular operators. So that leads us to this picture. My working title is all the colors I can found in Xornal and wasn't afraid to use them. So uh, 
we were in the situations that we have this chains on model space of remote surfaces and we had some morphism to, to functions on Hilbert space. And both of these are twisted modular operands. And so we can, so, so it was shown that you can actually take the Feynman transform of modular operands and map them to the to these chains of chains on moduli space. And basically this map will tell you how to decompose this moduli space and it will tell you these geometrical vertices. Or, uh, and you, you can see this map similarly, like the, the map between the operat and the endomorphism operat, because the chains are again some kind of vector space. So it's very similar to what you've seen before. Or you can take this Feynman transform of modular operat and map it directly to the functions on the Hilbert space, and you get the algebraic vertices. It will tell you this particular solution of the master equation. And it, it it's kind of useful to realize that here on the Feynman transform of modular operas, you don't need to have something so complicated like the moduli space, but you can use here the examples I have shown you before. You can use this kind of very trivial homomorphism classes and they will give you the toy example, but they will actually already tell you a lot about the, 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 the structure, what will be happening in this huge moduli space or on these functions on Hilbert space. So when you want to try something, you don't have to try it directly on these two spaces, but you can try it with this toy example, play with this, and then see what will happen. And that was basically our idea for what we are doing in the next. Because um, for the closed strings, for example, you, you take the, the, this quantum closed modular opera, the, the trivial one, one with the punctures on the interior, you, you can assign to it the, the functions on this Hilbert space, which would be given basically by like something similar like symmetric tensor powers on the vector space. And you have the, the battalion Wilkowski uh, Laplace and the bracket, the, the way as you already probably met many times. And the, this S will actually encode you to some quantum L infinity algebra. And in this case, you you know already everything because you also know what is this, the product on this space. Here it's very trivial. So in this case, it's it's kind of like you have everything already. But in 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 general, if you choose, for example, the, the one for the open strings, you kind of struggle because you don't know what should be the product here and you know that you would like to have the product on these functions here. So you kind of try to guess what should be the product on the modular operator. And that led us to, to our structure. So this is the, the part which we, we are working with, uh, Dobek, Yurcho, and Kuhlman. And because we have this kind of nice geometrical examples, which have nice interpretation, we, we decide to use the connected sum and use the fact that we can do basically everything in, in, in pictorial language. So this connected sum, you can think about two surfaces and the connected sum should be connecting these two surfaces such that you get again some new surface. And uh, when we start doing this, we realized that uh, to satisfy axioms we would like to have for the graded commutative product, we actually need to introduce a second map, which we call the, 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 the hash with the index one, which is on just one component. And we have here this funky grading. I can explain it if there will be time. But basically, if this is of some degree, we must have here a degree plus one. So here is G1 plus one. So here it's one plus one. And these two maps together will, will give us the graded commutative product, which we would expect to, to we would like to have. And uh, we were able to, to define now the two maps, one of them, uh, both of them on, on the modular operat and on the odd modular endomorphism operat. And this way we, we are able to introduce, here should be also the invariance of the space to introduce some product we call star to, to somehow distinguish it 
to, from the usual product and some new map called cross. And what they prove is that if you take this space of functions we had before and use this button almost button algebra with this new product star, we get the balance on Reinfeldt algebra. This surprised us a lot because the first two relation is what we would expect from the button This three relation is what we would expect. But in the fourth relation, as you can see, there suddenly we have something new. And this is absent in the normal button in Volkovsky algebra, but we need to have it there because of the grading reasons and cannot get rid of it anyway. Then uh, a technical intermet, so basically this second map, you can like turn it into to like let's say roughly multiplying by some formal parameter k kappa and uh, you you can kind of you, you have to introduce the weight grading so you can consistently say what should be uh, exponential of element here so basically you, you introduce the, the product between the elements the way that you never get to some too low weight so you are bound from from you have some lower bound on the weight you can introduce the exponentials you can also introduce the logarithms that's another technical intermezzo and uh, this way you you have exponentials and that now sounds kind of i'm repeating myself but the trick is that if you have the symplectic form, which is compatible with the differential, and you do the, the Hodge decomposition, you can use the homological perturbation lemma and basically take the functions with the differential here and make us and transfer the, the and and connect it with the functions on the cohomology of this vector space and use delta, the button Wilkowski delta, as a perturbation of this differential. And homological perturbation lemma tells you if this was the special deformation retract, this would be a special deformation retract. And basically, since we have here the, the, the solution of the quantum mastery equation, we, we, we can call it action. The, what we can show now is that the, the the structure we transfer to the, co the functions on cohomology again satisfy the quantum mastery and, and again satisfy the quantum mastery equation here. These two actions are actually related and we can now prove it directly by using these exponentials. So before people have to do it like manually or guess it somehow, now we are able to do it like formally with, with, the, the, with the help of exponentials. And that's, thing, I think, all. Thank, thank you very much for a great talk. Um, yeah, and uh, so, yeah, questions. Should I stop sharing? Sorry? I, I will stop sharing. No, 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 please, please continue sharing. I mean, people will ask. Uh, yes, uh, so Eugenia has a question. Okay, hi, hi Lada. Thank, Thank you very much for your talk. Um, I have a question that it's not really related to what you said, but about uh, string field theory. And um, in particular, um, are there results in string theory that could be obtained using the viewpoint of uh, um, an algebra over uh, Feynman modular uh, operats, as you, as uh, Markle uh, proved. So, I'm, I'm honestly not sure if there are like results which you can obtain only by using the modular operat setting. I'm not sure if, if it's like not possible to reach them some other way. And to be honest, I'm actually not a big expert for this part. So I use it usually as like a motivation why to care about modular operats. And I'm not sure if there is like something which couldn't be reached some by some normal techniques of string field theory. 
I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, um, any other questions? Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. We have a couple. Okay. So, oh, okay. So let's start with, uh, with, uh, it's moving. Okay. With Yiri. Um, yeah. Uh, hi, Lada. Thanks uh, for the talk. Uh, I would have uh, quite a simple question. Uh, when you said that uh, you were searching uh, for some kind of uh, uh, um, BV, and uh, it has turned out that uh, furnishing uh, the um, Feynman transform of a modular operat with a connected sum uh, doesn't really uh, end with a Batan uh, Wilkowski, but instead uh, uh, Balinson Drinfeld. Is it a problem or, or not to have this? Uh, uh, quite different uh, um, algebraic structure. So, the, in general, modular operas are constructed the way that they should give you the button Velkovsky bracket and the operator Laplace, the, the BV Laplacian. So, they are, they are constructed the way that you naturally obtain this BV structure. And the, the missing product basically means that. Uh, we are not in contradiction with anything because uh, there wasn't anything we, like in, in the case of, of this quantum closed strings we compare it and we actually can get the same thing because th this g grading is usually not uh, it's not possible to see it directly in the symmetric tensor powers of b because you kind of like artificially put there some G grading, but you, you cannot see it there. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you don't keep a record of it, you don't see that you have some problem with the G grading and then you kind of don't see if there... Okay. This thing is not in contradiction. And we, when we try to compare it, we can obtain the, the, the classical version for the, the closed strings to quantum L infinity. So yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we kind of don't know how to interpret the fact that we get the balance on Greenfield. Like to us, this seems more natural than the, some some other construction from Kaufman, Bart, and Zuniga. You use the Bittrig union of two surfaces, basically. But then it's kind of weird what means to have the permutation of the, the punctures. Like you have punctures from two different surfaces and you try to randomly permute them. And that kind of is weird when you want to keep the geometric interpretation. Mm. So I think our approach is not wrong. I don't know how to interpret it. Actually. Yes. So you are waiting for for some some physical interpretations of this yes. uh, no novelty term in in your algebra structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the question. And now uh, Elba. Yes. Uh, thanks for the nice talk. Um, yeah, as I said, uh, I'm not an expert at all in uh, operates, but I'm inter interested in that. So I wanted to ask, uh, did I understand correctly that there is a notion of uh, Kossuth duality for modular operates then as well? Or I think so. It's, it's kind of tricky. I know that some years ago it was kind of still unclear what, should, what it should actually mean. And then I think it was Ward who, who made article about like what is how, how to interpret the kosher duality in, in the setting of modular operas. I think it's kind of recent, like few years ago. And, and I think it was Ward. I'm not sure. No. Okay, thank you. Very good. Thank you for the question. Uh, yeah, so since I think we are doing great with time, so I will dare to have a cheap question. <laughs> uh, so, 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 so the, the story and the very nice picture that you drew, like that they were all about these two dimensional topology, right? Like surfaces and and stuff. Uh, so the very cheap question would be like, uh, have do you know that pe like have people been considering these things in kind of different dimensions? Like, <laughs> uh. 
So in principle, I think you can do modular operas like you, you saw in Lucas Miller talk for, for like handle bodies where you have like eyes. Right? I had the arm for myself. So when you have the, the, the not the surfaces, but like the three dimensional objects, and it's possible to, to probably to do similar stuff there. And the modular operas from the way how they are constructed, they should probably give you also the battle Wilkowski algebra. Not, not with the product, but almost Baton mm -hmm. Uh And I think there should be also some other constructions. For example, you can take the, the Lee, make the, this Feynman transform, get the quantum C infinity. But I'm honestly not sure if there is any good geometrical interpretation. So probably also the connected sum could be working there, but I'm not sure if, if it would have this nice geometric interpretation. But I think a lot of modular operats could would you would give you naturally the battle of the algebra. And the question is how to put the product there. So I'm not sure which of them has like a higher dimensional interpretation. Like mm -hmm. yeah. But but like the, the, the naively would you would you take like in, in your opera again like these homotopy classes or or whatever classes of 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 three dimensional manifolds with boundaries and then then gluing them together is, is that the picture that I should have in mind or yeah probably I would do something like this but it's necessary to kind of like a check that it has really the structure of modular operas I okay. I, I don't have a specific example for this. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I didn't mean necessarily that they should be modular operas, but like some generalization of maybe even of operas or something. Because because then like when you when you glue them, then you probably want to glue them along the, uh, yeah. So so you, you, I mean in, in do, do, do two dimensional things, you can you only have the circle and you can glue along circles, but it, in, like in three D you would have like boundaries which can be different and then would be like all on you know like. I can put them along some two dimensional stuff. I mean, it will be probably horrible. And yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just curious if people, if someone had tried to go in this direction. Uh, I, I don't know, to, to be honest. I would expect that if people try to do something where you can have like various kind of surfaces you can glue together, you you would need to get to this colored version of operas. Mm -hmm. because I see. You I see. Kind of like need to specify maybe what kind of things you are gluing together. But mm -hmm. I'm I'm really not sure. Okay. Okay. No. But that that, that sounds that sounds sounds good. Okay. So I should I should look into colored operas and they are maybe do it. But okay. Thanks. Yeah, maybe, sorry if this was a question out of context. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, that's thank you. Um, yeah, so any any further questions? Okay, so yeah, probably not. So let's let's I think we can stop the recording. And uh, thanks, Lada, again for a very nice talk.